January 2012 and I'm enjoying the heat coming uh, from our new geothermal heat pump. This video is going to be about the installation of our uh, geothermal system that was, took place in November and December 2011. We purchased the equipment from IngramsWaterAndAir.com and, Air .com and uh, started that with the delivery of the equipment in uh, November, late November. And I'll show you from beginning to end how we put the system in. This is Saturday, November 26, 2011. <clears throat> and on this video, I'm going to show you the, the layout and eventually the installation of our geothermal heat pump system. Last Monday, the, all the equipment arrived from Ingram Water and Air. Um, got on, offloaded, everything was undamaged. Free shipping, which was nice. And as you can see here, we've got the, the coils. We're going to have four, um, four trenches. It's a three and a half ton unit, so we'll have four trenches. <clears throat> the, eventually, the, um, the manifold will be, uh, let's see, right in this spot. And it'll enter the house. There's a small hole right here where it'll enter the house into the crawl space. And that's where we'll have the installation of the, the uh, heat pump. So yesterday, using stakes and string and lime, I laid out <clears throat> where I want the trenches to be. The one trench will come up to the house uh, for the entry point right here. It goes all the way along this direction. And then I've got a, a trench, a connecting trench, that comes back and will connect all four of the trenches when we get them laid out. So you can see my wife and I built our first uh, slinky of the uh, geothermal piping. So we did that yesterday. Today we'll finish the other three. You can. This is the last of the four. You can see how this is all laid out. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we're building a coil. My wife's doing the camera work, otherwise she'd be also helping here. So we've set this up here. I just undo a couple of coils so I got plenty of space. Take one. <clears throat> create the three foot diameter uh, coil here on my table. The center of the last one's here, the center of this one is here. So it goes within my, um, my guidelines. I put a tie in to hold this in. And then if Peggy was over here, she'd be tying this one down. So we're tying these together. And then about every fifth one or so, I tie this piece here, fourth or fifth one, just to keep everything together nicely. Okay, so we've, so far we've got three out of the four of the slinkies made. Right now Peggy's bringing back the return, so the, the hose ends out here, makes a loop back, and then she's tying it about every five feet or so. She's tying the return line into the, the rest of the slinky. All right, so this is uh, Friday, December 2nd, 2011. This is trenching day. We just got started. The one thing that we had to watch out for was that one conduit. We just located it safely, no problems. And now he's digging around it to get our seven foot trench. Seven feet deep here. You can see the bottom right down here. That's seven feet down. And then he's working to get us uh, around the conduit. And then we'll start digging the rest of the trenches. So we've staged each of the uh, <clears throat> of the slinkies of piping out here with the first one to go in first and second one second. I've marked the end of each trench, I decided to use red paint in case the, it rained or something. So I marked the end of each trench and you can see how that lines up with the, with the markings for this. This is actually the first trench. But if you look over here where he's working right now, we're getting very close to the, uh, to the point where right here you can see the red paint there. So he's coming very close now to the end of the first trench. So soon we'll be dropping in the first slinky of pipe and 
putting some sand over the protection, and then uh, starting on the second one. Okay, so we're dropping the, the first set of slinkies in here to the first trench. There we go. Saturday, December 3rd, 2011, we've got the, the last coil in the ground, and here we're shading the pipe with uh, with sand to protect it during the during the uh, backfill. And you see what they do is they pour on one side of the trench and then pull back a little bit, pour on the other side of the trench till we've got the pipe completely covered, and then they shift down a little bit. So you can see the coils down in here. There's the first load of sand. Here comes the second. So here's the final product. Uh, the same Sunday afternoon. There's the manifolds. One will be intake. One will be outflow. I'll work that out with the uh, my HVAC contractor. And uh, <clears throat> these the, the, these parts here, um, coming up here and on this side, are actually planned for possible future use of the same geothermal heat source to run a small spa heater. I'm not going to put that in right now, but I thought I'd put in the plumbing to the location where I'm going to eventually put the spa while I was putting this in. Same thing with this conduit. This will run the electricity out to the out to where we'll put all the spa equipment. Here's the, the manifold. You can see where the, the pipes go into the crawl space here. Now we're going to shift all of our activity to the crawl space. So here's the pipes coming in on this side. I just started trenching so I can take it to the final location. You can see the heat pump here that we're passing by. Um, the final location is on top of these piers. <coughs> And the old unit has to be removed. And as soon as that's gone, we'll pick up the uh, the heat pump and place it on top of these piers. Way to the back, I put the uh, the pipes in. Actually, dug a trench. I buried it somewhat as I got uh, closer here. This is the return pipe, which we've uh, set up to the heat pump. Right now, <coughs> I'm circulating the um, uh, the water glycol combination through the the heat pump and so far out of four um, slinky lines three of them have been filled I've got one left to fill and we're shooting okay so we're filling the last slinky line and and I'm adding glycol in here as as I have space and then I have to add water right now I have the the pumps off for the moment uh, they went down they go down pretty rapidly when uh, uh, is, is the, it's filling the uh, slinky, so I'm stopping them every now and then, adding a good portion of glycol, and then when I turn them back on, I turn on the hose to fill in the gaps. Everything looks good. Uh, I've checked for leaks. I've got one small leak in the manifold, which I can fix tomorrow very easily with uh, just tightening it up a little bit. But um, very, very pleased. Everything's gone in quite well. The uh, tubing was, was a bit of a challenge just because it's, it's uh, difficult to put on so I put a little bit of uh, vegetable oil on, uh, uh, on the fittings and on the tubing in order to make it uh, go on a little easier. That seemed to work just fine. We've supported the pipes here. Also had to support the tubing over here so they didn't get any any tweaking of this particular uh, piece. But um, everything seems to be going well. So this is early February. Uh, 2012. We had a full month of uh, January to enjoy our geothermal heat pump and I'm just in, feeling the, the warm air still coming out of the re register here. Since we did uh, the month of January I've got um, uh, some numbers, calculations I did. The uh, temperatures on the low side were in the 30s and low 40s. On the high side they were in the mid 60s uh, during January. Uh, we spent 336 kilowatt hours to heat the house which uh, at our uh, local rate cost uh, just under $45. Last year it cost $157 of propane to heat the house and we actually had the thermostat set uh, much lower so it's been much more comfortable this year. 
So all, overall, very pleased with our geothermal heat pump. Uh, it's gone great, and so best of luck with your project.